Well, hello everyone. My name is Chloe Sider. I am the program coordinator at the Sheboygan County Historical Museum and I am getting so excited because it's almost May Day. Yay! May Day is on May 1st, which is this coming Friday, and we have decided at the museum that this is the perfect time to bring back a popular tradition from May Day, which is May Day Baskets. Uh, this is a fun way that we can show love to our neighbors, especially right now when we have to be so, so far apart. And uh, especially for some people who might be lonely right now, this is going to be a really great way to be able to reach out to them and let them know that you care, that you're thinking about them, and that you want to share a little sweet surprise with them. So today, I am going to be showing you a couple examples of different kinds of May baskets that you can make from anything you find at home. So uh, earlier this week, I challenged you to look around your house and think creatively, what do I have that I could make into a basket? Because maybe, maybe you need to see something with a different fresh perspective. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of things that I made, and then I will show you how to make um, two of the really simple versions, but I'll at least explain how I made a couple of the other ones. So bear with me as I explain things and hopefully uh, you'll you'll be able to understand. But first, before we dive in, you know, some people have asked me, what is May Day? And I can't believe this. I always celebrated May Day growing up. I thought everybody did this, but apparently not. So I should explain first, what exactly is May Day? So May Day is a celebration of the return of spring. And this is a long, long, long time ago that this tradition started in this celebration. In fact, it goes back to the ancient Roman times. And of course, as Rome, we all know from our history, the Roman Empire expanded over all of Europe. So as they expanded, so did this festival. So it grew into various different um, traditions and activities depending on where uh, the, the festivity was taking place. So popular places that May Day uh, really took hold in were um, England, uh, Germany, Italy, and Celtic countries like Ireland. So there are all sorts of different activities that go on with May Day. So you'll see lots of lovely ladies and girls with flower crowns on like that. And um, there is uh, the Maypole dance that you'll see uh, uh, with ribbons and strings hanging off that they do a dance around and they pretty much wrap the pole up with these pretty ribbons. It's very fun to watch. There's usually a May Queen um, and there's dances and food and May baskets. So um, we are excited to be bringing this tradition back uh, and doing this as an activity that is a perfect thing for being uh, social distance right now. So uh, one example of a May Day basket and one that we're going to be making today is a cone basket that you can make out of um, construction paper if you have construction paper. Otherwise um, scrapbook paper is good, maybe even newspaper. So you can make big ones like this or you can make smaller ones. So here is a example of a smaller one that you can make as well. So, and I've made paper flowers. The other one was more fancy. Those were uh, some fake flowers that I had, but you can fill your baskets with real flowers. If you have them, I encourage real flowers. I love flowers, but unfortunately where we live, there's not a lot of sun on my garden right now. So I have these little itty bitty little sprouts <laughs> still. So I don't have any flowers to give away for real, but I can also make some paper flowers. So I'll show you guys how to do this. And some of them I put gems on. So I had gems around the house that I found. Um, otherwise you can use buttons, things like that. So I also had the uh, Hershey Kisses to put a little treat in. And then um, I also made some little maypoles that I'll also show you how to make those. So we'll come, come back to that. And then I also had a can of cashews that I emptied out, ate most of them. Uh, then I washed out the, the canister and I turned that into a basket. So I just took off the, the wrapper on the outside and instead I glued on some pretty ribbon that we had left over from our wedding. Uh, and then I glued on some buttons cause I had a bunch of buttons laying around and then I was able to actually punch holes with a hole puncher. 
So I have my handy dandy hole puncher. So if you have one of those, that is awesome um, that I was able to put, punch a hole with. But if you don't have a hole puncher, you can still um, carefully either use scissors um, to punch a hole. If you are a child watching this, please make sure you have adult supervision helping you out with these things. Um, and another thing you can do is also uh, use a nail. And I ended up doing that with my tin cans, which I'll show you next. So you can use a nail and a hammer and again, Make sure you have adult supervision for this, please and thank you. Gotta watch out for those little fingers. So my tin cans, I made sure that my husband and I, we had canned soup the other night just so I could have the cans. Uh, so maybe you have some canned vegetables or fruits or soup or something uh, that you can then save the can. So again, I just peeled off the, the wrapper and I washed out, make sure you wash out the inside, please. I'm sure your neighbors wouldn't like the residue on the inside if you forgot. Uh, and then you can paint it. So this time, this one I painted, they were supposed to be leaves, but I'm not gonna lie, they kinda look like cactuses, but that's all right. Maybe I had my grandmother who lives in Phoenix in mind when I was painting. <laughs> and then I did the same thing where um, I, put my, my flowers inside. I also got some extra little chocolates um, as a special treat that I put a couple of those inside. And then uh, you can find these on the events page. Otherwise, if you go to the Sheboygan County Historical Museum's website, uh, you will find a link to the PDA, uh, PDF of our little May, uh, May Day <laughs> Uh, happy May Day tags that you can also attach to all of your baskets. So we encourage you to do that as well. And then you can even write a little note on the back. Sorry, it's backwards to you guys, but I just wrote, don't give up. You are loved. So, and then again, I have another little maypole that I made. This one I made with ribbons. So I'll show you how to make one of those as well. So that's one example. And then if you don't want to paint, your can, you can also um, do the same thing with ribbon around it. You can take paper and put that around it. Uh, you can color it with Sharpie maybe if you want. Think creatively about how you can be decorating uh, your, your can if you wanna spruce it up a little bit. Or maybe you've got stickers and you can put stickers on it. Um, I glued on a bow here. So think about things like, like that. And then as I mentioned with the tin cans, obviously I couldn't punch with the hole punch to get a hole through there. So I just took um, a nail and a hammer and carefully tapped that in. And then I used twine on these ones since it was a little bit thinner, but you can use yarn, string, um, ribbon, twine, whatever you have to make your handle for, for your uh, baskets. So now these ones are probably a little more creative of what you could do, but if you have plastic or paper cups around the house uh, that are disposable, you can also turn that into a basket. Go figure. So all I had to do was punch, again, I punched holes into the side of each side to, to pop my, my handle in, but um, you can make a little slit with a scissors or a knife. Uh, please be careful or punch a hole with, with something to get your ribbon through. Otherwise, you can also just hot glue it on. So I've got my handy dandy hot glue gun here. Um, you can also glue. And what I did too for this one, you can see I took yarn and I braided it to make it a little more interesting for my, my handle. And then I also glued on, I had these hearts left over from Valentine's Day that are all sparkly and fun. So I glued those on just to give my cup a little bit more, but you can find fun ways to decorate that as well. And then same thing I had, we have, my husband's a big Packer fan. I mean, we're in Wisconsin. Who's not a big Packer fan, am I right? And so I took one of the cups and I did the same thing where I punched a hole on each side. And this time I actually used pipe cleaner to make my uh, handle. And then I've got my, my flowers with both the ones with the gems and I've got some with the Hershey Kisses. I've got my little maypole and then I'll add some more uh, little candies in there. I've got my tag and I am good to go. So hopefully who gets, whoever gets that will also be a big Packer fan and appreciate that. Uh, and then the last example that I have is you can take a paper plate and turn that whoops, into a basket as well. My flowers are falling out of my basket, but so you can cut your, ba your, your plate in half and then attach 
it together with staples. So I'll show you how to do that. And then I took yarn on this one. I tried to color it like a sun. So you can color it, you can paint it, um, do whatever you want, stickers, fun things like that. And then I attached my tag. I've got my flowers that I can, I can tuck in here. Hopefully they won't fall out this time. So all sorts of goodies you can, you can stick, stick in here and hang that. So again, I wanna encourage you guys to be using what you have around the house. So this isn't something that I necessarily want you guys to feel like you have to run to the store to get anything because you can be resourceful and work with what you got. So I'm gonna show you how to make the cone uh, basket really quickly. These ones are super simple. Probably the easiest out of any of them. And if you want, you can decorate the, the colored paper more. If you have just white paper, um, you can decorate it ahead of time and then roll it how you want to. Uh, so again, get as creative as you would like. So if you wanna make the big basket like this one, the big cone basket here, all you have to do is you take your piece of card or colored paper, excuse me, and you're gonna start in the one one corner and you're just gonna start rolling it in. And just keep on a rolling. And if you don't like it, the good thing is that you can re-roll it as many times as you want. So, so that's kind of pretty much how it would work. I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'm gonna try re-rolling it. Just wait, I'll re-roll it and it won't be, be that good. <laughs> be worse. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, so then what you can do is take your tape. Or if you don't have tape, you can use a glue stick. Um, but tape is probably the easiest. So then just tape your edge down in the corner here. Hold that in place. And then I'm also gonna put one on the back just to reinforce it a little bit more. There we go. And then I've got my cone. And I'm gonna take my hole puncher and I'm going to create a hole on each side, roughly about the same place, preferably, so it's symmetrical, but you your best with that and then like I said you can use um, twine all the yarn I am a knitter so in a crocheter and I end up with all these little dinky little balls of yarn that I have nothing to do with so this is perfect for that and you can also use that to um, make your uh, your rolls or your excuse me bows with them things like that so um, think creatively with that so all I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna tie it into the hole here. You can tie it all sorts of different ways, however you'd like that's easiest for you. And then I'm gonna make my handle a little bigger here so there's enough room for it to hang because these are gonna go on your neighbor's doorknobs. So you can hang these on your doorknobs, that's the point of the handle. But you know, if you wanted um, to use, like if you have a legitimate basket, kudos to you, um, you can fill your basket with all sorts of little goodies for your neighbor. If you wanna, you know, bake them a casserole or some, um, some special dessert or something like that and put it in the basket. You can also just leave it at the, the base of the, the bottom of the door. So there we go, there's my uh, my cone. And I'll, t I'll give you guys a little tip. So I've also been taking newspaper and folding it up to push inside um, so that whatever I put in there doesn't fall all the way to the bottom. Um, so especially with, actually I'm use the other one, with the, um, tin cans and things like that, uh, depending on the size of the flowers and the things that you're putting in there, it might be good to just have a little something to set it on. So there you have it. There is the larger paper cone. And then for the smaller size one, it's literally the same exact thing. All I did was I cut it in half. So then you can also get two uh, baskets out of one piece of paper, depending on what, how much supplies you have. So you're gonna do the same thing where you're starting the, the corner and you're gonna roll. It's gonna, the size is gonna be, or shape will be a little funkier, I'm not gonna lie. So maybe you can look online and find a better way to make these. I am by no means the expert. 
I started making Mayday baskets in school. This was something that we always made as kids. Um, and then we took them out to the neighborhoods to make or to give away, excuse me, to our neighbors. And then I kept doing it and I was still doing it in college and giving it away to my friends and neighbors. So, um, and even my husband, I, so it's basically ding dong ditch, but in a very nice way. Um, so I did it before we were, we were dating. I ding dong ditched him and his uh, roommates at their house and left them a May basket because I had a crush on him, so. All right, so here is the smaller May basket with the paper, the paper cone. Um, so again, we're gonna take some tape and just kinda, we're gonna take our end, my end's on the back here, so I'm gonna glue, excuse me, tape that shut. And then with these ones, I've also, because my hole's a little bigger on the bottom there, so what I've been doing also is taking stapler and just putting a little staple in the bottom so that things are less likely to fall through. And then it's the same thing where we're gonna hole punch and uh, put the, our, our string or yarn or ribbon, ribbon, whatever you have through. And then again, I'll, I'll fill that with um, a little bit of newspaper. So that is the paper cones. The next one I'm gonna show you real quick is the paper plate basket. So there are various different ways that you can do this. The one that I found that I liked is to take one plate and cut it in half and then um, you can either staple it back together or you can um, glue it. I saw another one recently where they took, um, uh, they did a hole punch thing again around it and they took ribbon and they kind of sewed it, which was nice. So I'm going to use the other one. I kind of use regular scissors and I just went in a zigzag pattern, but I've got these funky little scissors. So I'm going to give this one a try. So just cut down the middle. All right, and if one side ends up being bigger than the other, it really doesn't matter because you can just make that the back of your basket. Kind of looks like a, an egg. <laughs> so then once you have it, you're gonna line it up so that your curved edges are facing out. And if you want to decorate it before you staple it, um, I will say when I colored it after I put it together um, and it was a little more difficult. So if you want to, color it or do some watercolors on it or paint it or whatever, uh, feel free to do that first. And then I'm gonna just staple it together. So I'm just gonna go to the edges and put some staples in, going around all the way. And what's nice about the staples versus the glue is that it's gonna hold together a little bit better. So there you go, and then you've got your pocket. So I'm going to, um, this time I think, cause on this one, I did the one hole in the front and the back like this. I think I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this time where I'm gonna do two holes through each side. So I'm gonna do one there and maybe one out there. Awesome. So then what I'm gonna do now is I will take some yarn here, find my, my end, and I think I'm gonna string it through my holes, and I'm just gonna tie a couple of big knots. And if you are doing this too with knots and you find that your knots are slipping through your holes still, I recommend that you take some glue, whether it's hot glue or something else, and you can just reinforce it um, so that it doesn't slip through. So I'm gonna do that. Oops, I have regular scissors here. All right, so you pretty much get the, the gist of this, what I'm doing. And like I said, uh, we do have these tags um, available online. You can print these off or otherwise make a tag of your own. Make sure that you're leaving a little note that says Happy May Day um, and encouraging your neighbors with a little note to make sure that they still feel loved. So again, with these, all I was doing was um, I just hole punched and then I was able to string it right through. All right, and then last but not least, I'm gonna show you how to make um, the little 
maypoles that I had. So I had two different kinds. I have to say, I think I liked my yarn one a little bit better. So this is my little mini uh, maypole that I made out of yarn. And then um, I have a popsicle stick. So, and then there's also this kind that's really nice too with ribbon. So I already pre-cut my strips. So what I am doing is I pretty much took the length of my popsicle stick and then went just a little bit longer. Um, if you don't have popsicle sticks or you have straws, something like that, you can um, use whatever you have again. So um, what I am gonna do then is um, glue it so that I have two uh, rib pieces of ribbon on each side and I'm gonna have them going in different directions. So have my first one on and if you're working with hot glue be careful not to burn your fingers I have done that many many times my mom had cool glue as well which was not as hot but I unfortunately don't have cool glue I guess I'm not as cool as my mom so then that's the first side and then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side a little bit of glue Take your ribbon and again you're going to crisscross. I like to have the tips hanging off just a little bit above because if you go and you look online on Google at pictures of maypoles you'll see that there's usually a little something at the top as well sticking up so then that gives you a little bit fun fun something hanging off. So there you go that's the front and the back of that one and then it's the same thing for the yarn. I did the exact same thing for measuring just a little bit longer and then I did, for this one, I did three and three on each side. So I'm gonna take my, my yarn and line them so they're pretty much the same length at the end there. I'm gonna put on a little bit of glue. And now I'm gonna tack on my yarn. So I'm just gonna carefully push it into, oops, see I glued my finger. Good thing it's not super glue. I've done that before. More times than I'd like to admit. <laughs> so there's your, your first side. I'm gonna go and do this at the back side. And it's again, the same thing. I'm just gonna face my yarn now going the opposite direction. So that it's hanging off the other way. Oops, I got a little jumper. Hold on, I need a little more glue. He's trying to escape. Okay, so this is just a little something else to add into your basket and it's uh, reflecting of the, the fun traditions that usually take place around May Day as well. Um, so there you have it. Uh, I would love to see your baskets. So please, please, please take pictures and post them on social media. Please tag the Sheboygan County Historical Museum. Uh, and we have a number of really awesome partnerships going on with other organizations throughout the county because we are, it is our mission to, to try and cover Sheboygan County with love in the form of May baskets. So uh, we are thankful to Above and Beyond Children's Museum, the uh, John My Michael Kohler Art Center, um, now I'm not going to remember everybody. I'm so sorry if I forget you. Uh, Bookworm Gardens and Plymouth, uh, the Plymouth Public Library so far at this time are our partners and I'm hoping that it will keep growing. So if you also saw something or were inspired by one of their tutorials, we're asking them to make tutorials as well. Be sure to tag both the museum and whichever group inspired you so that they can see the pictures too. And I've never been a hashtag trend center. Um, but we are trying to have the hashtag Museum May Day also used so that all the posts then go into one place and you can search and then you guys can see other people's baskets as well. So thank you so much for tuning in today and I can't wait to see your lovely, lovely baskets on um, the Friday on May Day. Uh, and I'm sure that your neighbors are just going to feel so loved and so special. So thank you for, for joining us in this, this campaign to cover Sheboygan County in May Day baskets. All right, have a good rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye.